Hi everybody, Matt back with you. Hope you're okay. Now you might remember a couple of months ago, if you watch my channel regularly, that I did a little video on the gravestone in Christchurch of somebody called James Ellsworth. The James Ellsworth I was talking about in the video was officially the former landlord of the Railway Hotel in Liggett in Todmorden would run the hotel until about 1902 and his grave had recently reappeared from the undergrowth at Christchurch in Todmorden. The James Ellsworth that I wasn't talking about was the American wrestler James Ellsworth who also doesn't have a chin. However, I was informed quite reliably uh, by researcher Holly Burgoyne that the story of the James Ellsworth at the Railway Hotel might have needed a bit more covering as there was a story to tell there. The James Ellsworth story includes another man, William Moorby, and tragic events had unfolded at the Railway Hotel in 1902. James Ellsworth, a landlord of the Railway Hotel for 12 years, has passed away at the age of 49. He was buried at Christchurch Graveyard in Todmorden. He died due to inflammation of the brain, thought to be the outcome of a drunken, unprovoked attack on him a few weeks prior. William Moorby, 69 of 2 Picker Street in Liggett, a lodging house, died at his house on New Year's Day, January 1931. He'd gone to make a drink of tea, was cracking jokes when the teapot fell from his hand and he fell to the floor dead. A post-mortem showed his heart was enlarged and he had blood clots. He was buried on the 6th of January in Bacup Cemetery. This picture shows, almost shows the railway hotel to the right and two Picker Street to the left. In the shadow of the viaduct at Robin Wood. I'm heading to Bacup Cemetery and I'll tell you the story of how their lives interlinked in 1902. So now I'm in Bacup Cemetery and I may well have picked a bad day uh, to come and look for a gravestone. Um, obvious reasons if the grave is flat I'm not going to see it but if nothing else we're in the right area and it looks very beautiful with the snow and the sunlight So the newspaper headlines on the 4th of August 1902 screamed a violent navvy at large. William Moorby, a desperate looking navvy, was charged with stealing whiskey from the railway hotel 6am on Friday morning. Mr Ellsworth had heard glass smashing and headed downstairs and found Moorby next to the whiskey cask and drinking his mouth under the tap. Ellsworth pulled Moorby away, but Moorby was carrying a large piece of wood and struck Ellsworth on the side of the head. Another person had seen Moorby enter the premises and had gone for help. And they arrived and overpowered Moorby until the police arrived. So a hearing was called to establish the facts of what had happened. Moby claimed that he'd recently been released from jail and on that particular day he decided he was desperate for a drink and had gone on Burnley Road calling at every public house on the way. Now remember this happened at 6am at the railway hotel so he must have been calling at the other pubs at ungodly hours and had been sent away from all of them on account of his appearance with one witness saying 
He looked like an escapee from a lunatic asylum. Moby claimed that because of this lack of drink and his desperation for one, that it made him turn violent, and that's why he'd smashed the windows of the railway hotel and gone in to steal the whiskey. At the hearing, Moby claimed um, that he knew he wasn't right in the head. And it was revealed then that he had a history of assault, drunken disorderly behaviour, and he had indeed spent a month in jail serving hard labour. He had also been persistently cruel to his wife and his family. The court eventually decided to jail Moorby for about three and a half months on three charges. The break-in at the hotel, the assault on James Ellsworth, and the damage that he'd done to the railway hotel. Sadly, James Ellsworth never recovered from that bash on the head and died just a few weeks later. And perhaps it must have been very frustrating for the family um, when Moby was released from prison. They moved to 2 Picker Street, which is quite literally just two streets away from the railway hotel. I suppose we should question why Moby wasn't kind of brought up on some kind of manslaughter charge after Ellsworth did die from those injuries that he had inflicted. However, it didn't happen. Moby was released, but things didn't improve. As I mentioned earlier, it was reported that Moby had been persistently violent towards his wife, Sarah, and quite often, apparently, I would imagine due to drunken rages, He'd uh, threatened to uh, stab her or shoot her. And he, I think they were still married for about 19 years. And uh, they had seven children all together. And quite often he'd come home in drunken rages again and throw the whole lot of them out into the street to stay out in the street overnight. Um, so not a good person. So eventually she applied for um, a separation order. And unsurprisingly, once they pieced together uh, his history of uh, being in jail and violent and everything else, a uh, separation order was granted. However, when Moorby died in 1931, um, he was buried here in uh, Bacup Cemetery. Sadly, his then ex-wife uh, died just two weeks later. And the worst part of this story, I think, apart from uh, James's passing, of course, is that she is buried with him in the grave. I can't imagine she would have wanted that to happen. So Morby is buried with Sarah in plot A399. Now, I'm in the right area, but it is looking like um, I, there isn't a gravestone. I'm not sure they would probably have had any money for that to happen. Um, I'll show you why I think I'm in the right area anyway. So sometimes graves have the plot number on the back and that does help. Uh, sadly it doesn't happen in every graveyard. Um, but if we go off this being 384, 385, Six, seven, eight, nine, ninety, ninety-one, ninety-two, ninety-three. I presume, but again, the numbers have run out. Ninety-four, ninety-five-ish, ninety-six, ninety-seven, ninety-eight. So here, somewhere here, will be plot A three nine nine. And no, there isn't anything here. Just grass, it's not even covered up. Although some gravestones have completely, almost 
sunk into the ground. I'm still not convinced there'll be one here. So in no way, shape or form is this video uh, designed as a celebration of the life of William Moorby. It's designed to increase the story of James Ellsworth, whose grave I found and did a pretty throwaway video on purely because he has a name of a, an American wrestler. Um, I hadn't realised at the time that obviously he had a pretty tragic end and so the Morby piece is more just filling that story um, and yeah that's about it really. It's um, We didn't find the grave, I didn't know if we would but it's nice to come to a different cemetery and especially today it's a beautiful cemetery. Um, yeah, a bit of a sad story really. Um, Moby was just uh, an evil person uh, who was ruled by drink in his entire life. Yet Ellsworth passed away and he managed to come out and continue his life as if nothing had happened. Not sure if there's a miscarriage of justice there. What do you think? Okay guys, we'll see you soon. Bye for now.